Hi, welcome to this video. Doug Berry here. I appreciate you being with me. EDC, everyday carry. I'm gonna talk about that in this video. Everyday carry, stuff that we carry with us every day. Now, also I wanna address just briefly here what I call EAI, easily accessible items. We'll do a whole video on that later, but I wanted to just touch base with it right now because easily accessible items that you might need should have close by in case of an emergency crisis, something happens, you wanna think about this, such as fire extinguisher. You want to have a fire extinguisher close by. You want to have it in an area that's easily accessible. In case a fire breaks out, you don't want to have to be searching for it. If your house fills up with smoke, for example, you're not going to be seeing so clearly. You don't want to be digging through a cupboard trying to find uh, your, your fire extinguisher. It's somewhere in here. I know it is. Or it's back in a closet somewhere buried. Pepper spray is another thing. Having pepper spray close by. Having, having it easily accessible. I, women out there will tell me all the time when I do self-defense talks, you know, or security talks in places, they'll say, well, I do carry pepper spray. I keep it in my purse. And I say, well, how fast can you get it out? You know, a lot of times you can't get your car keys out very fast or you're trying to find a pacifier for your child or, or something along these lines. And if someone's attacking you or you sense a crisis coming, you're in a, a dangerous situation, you got to dig fast to get to that pepper spray. You want it easily accessible, easily accessible items. There's more we'll get into down the road with another video, but I wanted to address that briefly to get us thinking that way, that we want to have certain items that are easily accessible. Firearms, if you're a firearms individual, you want to have those easily accessible. It's only as good, any tool or instrument is only as good as its accessibility. So keep that in mind there for the EAI. Now, EDC, everyday carry, that's the sort of thing that we have to think about because every time we leave the house, we have items on us. So what do you have on you? What do you take with you? And what should you have? What would be good to have? What's helpful to have? Depending upon circumstances, your geographic location, weather conditions, and so forth. Obviously, if it's a really hot summer day, I'm not going to be dressing the same as it would as I would if it were snowy and cold outside here, right? So we want to be thinking about what we're carrying with us when we leave the house. I'm a big fan of keeping things simple, not really loading up too much. If you start loading up a ton of stuff, a lot of people will just kind of, they'll kind of they'll kind of die off when it comes to doing this. Well, I make it too hard, then oftentimes people won't do it. If it's too uncomfortable, people won't do it. So you want to pick items and you want to pack items, carry items that you know you're going to do. You know you're going to take with you. So a couple things in general I'll start with here. We all pretty much do this. We have a wallet of some sort, right? Where ladies, you have a purse and you're going to have basic things in the wallet. Your driver's license, for example. If you're a concealed carry individual, you want to have a concealed carry permit on you as well because you don't want to get pulled over by the police for a speeding ticket and you've got a firearm on you, but you don't have your permit on you. That's only going to escalate your problem. So having your concealed carry permit with you, not a bad idea. It's a good thing to do. Also, uh, you can have debit cards, credit cards, so forth. All right, that makes perfect sense. But how about cash? Keeping a little extra cash on hand. Now, I know people out there, sometimes they will carry two, three hundred dollars. All right, I like at least 50 to 100 dollars. Now, that's not my walking around money. Walking around money, you might have 20, 30 bucks in your, in your wallet or your purse, but I might have an extra 50 to 100 or so sitting aside in another part of the wallet that's there specifically for one thing, and that is an emergency of some sort. So that's something I carry with me every day. I also recommend, this is something, you know, we all do, right? Whatever, smartphones, right? Means of communication, important to have, right? Be careful with the smartphone, obviously with all the technology that's out there and people listening and this and that. You gotta be careful about those things, absolutely. But having a phone close by to communicate with people, family, friends, and so forth is a good thing. Most of us are gonna do that anyway. Wallet, money, credit cards, phone, pretty standard operating stuff. We're going to take with this, you know, car keys, What you have on your key ring, okay, can be helpful. I like to keep this little device here. It's a combination mini pry bar. It's got a couple little uh, wrenches on there. It's got a bottle opener there, a little measuring tool, screwdriver on the end. It's just a nice little handy gizmo to have on my keychain. This is something I've used several times, by the way. You know, there, you're going to have situations where you're going to be carrying stuff and you're going to wonder, well, am I even ever going to use this? Yeah. After a while, you might find out, you know what? I don't even use this. I'm just setting this one aside. I've done that. I've carried certain things and thought, yeah, this one just isn't panning out. I'm going to set this one aside. This little guy, I've used a lot for a variety of things. So that's on my key ring all the time. Also, I don't go anywhere without these other two items, a knife and a flashlight. 
Good pocket knife in general is good to have. A little Smith & Wesson that I have here, a little serrated part of the blade here for sawing if I need to, nice little thumb grip on the top, nice little rubberized handle on there for a good grip even if it's damp. Now this little guy also has a hook here, it can go on inside of a pocket edge or go on a belt. It also has a belt cutter right here, which I've used many times, even opening packages. All right, if you've got little plastic tie straps on there, those little uh, zip tie type things, boom, pops right through that, let alone it'll cut through things like a seat belt in an emergency. Glass breaker on the end as well for various reasons, pinned in a car, you need to get somebody out of a car, you have this in your pocket, bang that glass, you may be saving someone's life. Great tool to have. Can be used for self-defense, absolutely. But this is a tool. I've used this for many, many things, even in a hotel room where I'm, I'm slicing a piece of fruit or something, you know? So it's, it's just a good item to have all the time. Also, a flashlight. Now, these little tactical flashlights come in so many different sizes, so many different lumens. Look at that, three different sizes right there. I've carried all of them, all right? This little guy stays normally in my uh, visor in my Jeep. Uh, I carried this one, it's a 300 lumen. It's got three settings, you got high, double tap, you got a strobe, three tap, you got low beam, all right? 300 lumen. Also got a 500 lumen, this is what I carry now. This has got a rechargeable battery in here. So you pull the battery out, plug the battery in, and you can just recharge the battery, it goes back in the flashlight. 500 lumens. Now this will throw light pretty far. For those out there who say, well, I just use the light on my phone, I got it covered. That's cool, that's up to you. If you wanna do that, that's fine. But you need to realize that you can't grip the phone nearly as well as you can a flashlight if there's a serious situation. This type of flashlight, by the way, has a double hook on here, a little mount here. So this little guy right here, I can actually, I can hook it in my pocket or I can use this part of it here and I can actually hook it on the brim of my hat. Slide it in backwards, now I got a light on the brim of my hat. It's great also because a little texture grip on there and all, which I really like. It's waterproof, uh, not submersible, but it definitely can get wet in the rain and so forth. But this could be used as a weapon. If I'm holding it nice and tight, I'm lighting things up. And if I got to pop somebody in the head or hit somebody with this, it works as a weapon as well. Try slapping somebody with your phone. It just doesn't work the same. But again, you want to carry the phone and make that your source of light? That's up to you. I am a fan of having a tactical flashlight on you all the time. Around the house, I have it with me. Right? I've lit up the house at night just to make sure doors are locked or I've shut all the knobs off on the stove before, you know, just a last glance down the hall maybe. I've lit up the parking lot when I'm walking through a dark parking lot. I light up the backyard when I get out of my car, make sure my wife, that she can see clearly when she's coming around the side of the vehicle. I light it up for her as well. It's a good thing to have for a variety of reasons. Different sizes, it's hard to say you can't find a size that works for you. So I highly recommend, again, the knife and the flashlight as critical pieces. In addition to that, I also am a concealed carry, so my firearm's with me as well, all right? I got a little, nice little holster there. Weapon is clear, mag has been dropped out previously here, so weapon is clear and safe. Keep my little Glock 26 with me. I like to carry this on the appendix. I got my Kydex holster here, covers the trigger, nice and safe. Now I'll vary where I carry. All right, sometimes it's appendix, sometimes it might be hip, sometimes it might be jacket, wherever. But the idea is I've got it with me, and I like the idea of having an extra mag with me as well, so you've got extra ammo. So these are items I highly recommend, and if you are a concealed carry, if you are a firearms individual, you've got to keep training. I've said this, and I want to say this every time I do a video on this or talk about this. It's not enough to say i got a concealed carry, I'm done. When I trained, when I, was, uh, when I went through my concealed carry class years ago, the instructor said this to the class. He said, you now have a certificate. It's a piece of paper. It basically says that you have the ability to ride a tricycle with training wheels, or a bicycle, excuse me, a bicycle with training wheels on the sidewalk in front of your house. That's the level you're at with your firearm. You went through one class, one day, you have a basic understanding of how to operate a firearm. He told us, you need to keep training. This is a retired Green Beret. So he had a little more experience uh, to be able to talk this way. So I'm saying, I'm passing that on to you all, is continue to train. All right, Most of us are not ex-military, ex-law enforcement. Even ex-military, ex-law enforcement should continue to train. They've told me that. I have friends in the field, right? Law enforcement, current and former, and military, current and former, all say the same thing. They know they need to keep training to stay sharp when it comes to learning how to handle 
their their weapon. So that's something very important. Now, if you do conceal carry every day and you've got that weapon with you regularly, you're taking it off at night, then on a daily basis, which is a good thing, I believe, I think that you're going through the process of chambering, uh, you're, you're, you're clearing the weapon, you're, you're dropping the mag, you're being safe with it, hopefully following four basic gun rules to a T, all right? And understand these four basic gun rules, pretty universal in general, that you, you follow these and you've got a really good chance of not having accidents happen. So again, keep the training going, be familiar with the weapon, respect it, understand the power of it, but don't be afraid of it, but respect it and know, know what it can do. All right. So that's an everyday carry for me as well. Now, as a Catholic, I also do the, Oh, before I get to that, I'm going to say this too. Okay. Belt. Got to have a good belt. All right. I'm a big fan of having a good belt. All right. I like this belt. Um, it's got this little, uh, Velcro strap to it that, that connects on there. Anyway, Details on these belts, you can find so many different good belts out there. But if you're going to be a concealed carry, you got to have a good belt if you're going to carry on, on the waist. All right. But that's something I think is important, too. Also, if you get in a crisis situation, you can attach things to the belt. You know, pull it out of your, your go bag, your bug out bag, and, and uh, you can throw it right on that belt. If you don't have that belt, now you're kind of kind of hamstrung when it comes to that. So having a good belt. I also recommend footwear. you got to have good footwear every day. All right. I go out of the house. I've got good footwear on. I have good footwear on that I can run in, I can hike in if I got to move fast. Depending on the weather situation, I want to be thinking about that as well. All right, if it's cold outside and snowing, then I want to make sure I've got the type of footwear that's going to keep my feet safe and allow me to move through those conditions. If you're going to church, for example, and you're wearing dress shoes or any scenario where you're wearing dress shoes, especially you ladies out there, you got the open toed, high heel dress shoe thing going. All right, you get in a crisis situation, you got to get out and hike in a cold climate or even just walk a long distance in high heels. It's not happening very well. You know this. So my wife, for example, she's got hiking boots in the car. And if we take the Jeep instead of her car, then they go to the Jeep. All right, so the idea is you have good footwear with you. It is one of the most critical pieces of everyday carry is being able to move with good footwear. All right. And again, consider your climate, consider your conditions, your weather conditions and so forth, your geographical location, all of that as you choose these items, all of them, but especially things like footwear. All right. And to me, that's an everyday carry just to have it on your person when you go out of the house, knowing you can move quick with it. Flip flops do not allow you to move fast. Sandals, certain types of sandals. Again, some are some are better than others. Some are more athletic. But again, you want you want your feet protected. You want to, be able to move fit fast and quick. And you want to be able to, you know, be agile depending on your climate, your conditions. You want to take care of the footwear. Now, to the point that I was mentioning earlier, as a Catholic, I don't go anywhere without a blessed rosary on my person. This is the sheet that I keep it in. And this is the rosary that I carry. I have several rosaries. This is the one that I carry all the time. It's a blessed rosary. I remember an exorcist saying that a Catholic should never leave the house without a blessed rosary on their person. Should never leave the house without a blessed rosary. Why? Because the demons despise it. The devil hates the power of what a blessed rosary is, what it can do when we pray it faithfully. So praying that rosary, keeping that rosary near me is important. I have one in my backpack. I have one in my, I have two in my Jeep. I have one by my bed, one on my, de- I have two on my desk, one in my pocket. I keep a blessed rosary with me all the time. It is as important to me as this. Keeping this with me, keeping this with me, both critically important for self-defense, spiritual and physical. So having a blessed rosary with you also uh, brown scapular. To me, that's everyday carry. Every day throughout the day, brown scapular. Have this with me all the time. On It is on me all the time. This is another important piece of my everyday carry. So spiritually speaking and naturally speaking, I cover them both. I highly want to encourage you to click the link below, go on out and get the free download that we have that addresses all of this and more. Get your free download that covers basic everyday carry and some EAI items, easily accessible items. Now, again, we're going to do another video on that in the future, but I want to address just a brief, a brief bit of that in this one. I wanted to do that at the beginning here. But again, go on out, get, get that download, get, get that free checklist, and have an idea. Start thinking this way, all right? It becomes an everyday thing. Now, there are people out there who, again, will say, and I want to emphasize this, if it's too hard, if it's too uncomfortable, you're probably not going to do it. So start with a few items You know, in addition to your phone and your purse and your wallet and so forth, you're doing that already, most of us, right? Okay, we'll start adding a few items. Make sure, for example, flashlight and knife. Just start with those two items right there, right? They're very simple. I use them again pretty much every day in one way, shape, or form. So even starting with that, 
If you're concealed carry, obviously that. Uh, again, you're going to have general things that you're going to you're going to tailor to your needs and your lifestyle, your circumstances. But get the mind thinking that way. Start training that way. You'll be better prepared. Remember this also: the better trained we are, the less likely we are to get into problems, because the easier it is for us to to basically divert the problem or deflect the problem or diffuse the problem before it escalates to anything even worse. For example, again, you're in the parking lot, it's dark, and you're concerned about moving to your vehicle, you've got a good flashlight on you, boom, you light up the way, and it can diffuse the problem, all right? And many other things, uh, many other examples we could give when it comes to this. So everyday carry, important, keep all this in mind, pray about this, think about your circumstances, and make some good choices. I always recommend that you get the best equipment that you can, uh, that you can afford, because you want it to work. All right, especially if you're in a tough situation, you don't want to pull a piece of junk out of your pocket and not have it work. So get the best equipment to the, to the degree that you can, that you can afford. And you can check our website, battlerystrong.com. We have a number of links there. And from there, you can find a whole host of other things as well. We also have a course out there that goes into much more detail, the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness course. You can find more information on that in the description below and on our website, battlerystrong.com. So again, God bless you and strength you for the fight. Appreciate you being with me. I look forward to talking to you again soon.